I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com, where we help you to discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. If you had not hit subscribe to this channel, do so, and let's get started. Today we're going to talk about abuse amnesia. You know the feeling where you're trying to describe the abuse that happened, or maybe you're thinking about how your ex-narcissist maybe really wasn't that bad, or you're wondering if any of the abuse was real and maybe you made it up, or maybe you're just missing them and you're thinking, well, all the good times were so good and, I mean, was the bad really as bad as I think it was? And you get really confused and it feels like all of the abuse either never happened or you're sort of diminishing the amount of pain it caused you. That is part of what abuse amnesia is. And one of the biggest things that can happen, I mean, one might think, well, who cares? If I don't remember the abuse, then at least I'm not having to relive that trauma all the time. But if we can't remember the abuse that happened, when that narcissist comes a hoovering, you can bet you're going to fall. And you're going to believe that everything they say and all those nice things of them trying to get you back and trying to win you back over are real. So it's important that we remember what we experienced as we experienced it, which is that it's terribly abusive and incredibly painful to have lived through it and that we don't fall into the trap of our own mind believing that the abuse never happened or that it wasn't as bad as we thought it was. It can also lead you to wanting to return to the narcissist and that also is not the ideal situation for your well-being, right? So um, let's talk a little bit about abuse amnesia. Um, basically what happens is it's a cognitive suppression where an abuse survivor has trouble recalling and remembering the boundaries that were crossed within a relationship or a uh, repeated, usually in a um, chronic abuse situation where a repeated boundary was crossed and or not regarded at all. And that boundary can be so many things, but in this case, we're talking about all of the ways in which a narcissist crosses your boundaries. And that is one of the major things with any of like any gaslighting, any projecting, any, any blame shifting, all of the stuff they do is that they're not just, they're not just being mean and calling you a name, which crosses one boundary, right? But they're twisting your own mind, which crosses your own boundaries you have within yourself about how you think and what you believe. So when that happens and Part, the other piece that's important with that is because they, the narcissistic abusive relationship, because the narcissist goes hot and cold, because they love bomb devalue, because they have a good side and a bad side. <clears throat> Most people always say this. It's, you know, the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, they're, they're one thing one minute, another thing the next, and walking on eggshells and not knowing which one's going to appear. Because of that, it, um, it creates in us a really strong desire to see the good, because most of us want to believe in the good in people and we want to see the good in people and we want, you know. So that strong desire to see the good mixed with the abuse keeping on happening and the boundaries being crossed can, creates a lot of confusion in your head and it can create this abuse amnesia because we are looking for the good and we want so bad to believe in the good that it's not a disregard for the bad, it's a literal forgetting that the bad ever happened. I mean, there's people like... Even even myself, if I try to recall a situation, I can downplay it in my head because I actually can't remember details until there's a lot of talking or I'm doing one of these videos and I'll go, oh my gosh, I remember that. You know, I've had, I've had several live streams where I'm in the middle of talking and it will hit me that that's actually what happened. Like actually what happened. It's different than talking about it. And, and their memory is like, whoa, okay, yeah, that was real. So see, it's, it's, our, it's a tidy way for our brain to keep us safe too, because if we can dissociate from the hurt of the trauma, we can endure the trauma, right? If we can dissociate enough from it, if we can detach enough from what's going on and actually forget what happened, then we can stay in the relationship and maintain what we think is the good stuff, okay? So it is a coping mechanism, but it's not there to help you once you leave it can, it, you have to start remembering at least pieces of the facts because that's what keeps you from returning. All right. Um, we, the one thing that happens with this that can also be kind of hurt, well, it is hurtful and can be 
um, difficult for people to heal from is that it because of it we learn not to trust our own gut reaction we learn not to trust our instinct we learn not to trust our own experience because we know it was bad but we can't remember what was bad about it and we can't really articulate it with words often um and it's in flashes like you may remember a whole bunch of bad stuff but then some some of it's like well but that wasn't so bad or were they really that bad or maybe it was me that even comes into it as well so you see we learn not to trust ourselves. and what do you need in life so much is the ability to to act on your own will to act on your own agency and to be able to trust what you're doing and to be able to trust your own experience so um that can happen and does happen. Um, basically with all of this, what do you do, right? What do you do with this abuse amnesia? Well, that is why so many of us will tell you over and over again, make those lists of the bad things, of the toxic things, of the, the pain, make the list, make your lists of the, of the abuse. Because if you have that list, there's your, there's your memory, okay? And, and that list doesn't have to be like, one to 10 and I can't remember anymore, or one to three and that's it. It's a running list. You just keep a list. That's all you keep on it are the things that happened as you remember them, write them down and try not to look at that list and justify any of the behavior. The list is simple, simply the experience that you had, <clears throat> excuse me. It is not meant to, uh, to analyze. It's just a list so that you have the proof in front of you when you feel yourself slipping into this not remembering or when there's, when things do come back, they may come back in a flash and then be forgotten again. So write them down. The reason it's important is not so that you can hate the narcissist your whole life. It's not so that you have to feel bad about the traumas that happened to you your whole life. It's none of that. It's so that you don't go back to an abusive and toxic situation that is not good for your life. All right. It's to keep you it's, it's your, it's your memory on paper that allows you to separate from the cognitive dissonance you feel, separate from the abuse amnesia and separate from those trauma bonds a little bit and have something to anchor to, to says, no, I don't want that. And I don't want any of these things in that list on my life ever again. And then that gives you some, somewhere to go when, the, when you're being hoovered or when you really feel the need to reach back to the narcissist. So that's what I got on abuse amnesia today. Um, maybe talk more about it later. If you have any questions or if anything comes up, leave a comment. I will try to answer as soon as I can. If you are in need of coaching or anything f for help with recovering from narcissistic abuse, you can find me in the main description of every video. Um, as I said, I'm one of the life coaches over at Queen Being. My name is Lise Colucci and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. I don't know how to turn it off.